Hello and a warm welcome to MSC TV News. I are reaching you live from the city of Lokoja, the confluent state of Nigeria. I am Sharif Atonuno Mohamed. The headlines. Buhari Kofas Award on three Nigerians, National Order of Merit. Senate OK's establishment of Nigeria Law Campus in Kogi, five others. And War College committed to producing highly trained leaders, says commandants. Now the news in detail. President Muhammad Buhari has covered the Nigeria National Order of Merit Award for year 2020 and 2021 on three Nigerians who distinguished themselves in the field of medicine and science, declaring that Nigeria's future rests on active participation in science and technology. Covering the award and the recipient, Dr. Oluin Kaoluro Temi Olutoye, Medicine 2020, the late Professor Charles Ejike Children, Science 2020, and Professor Godwin Samuel Ekwagure, Science 2021. The president said he was very proud to welcome the new laureate to the prestigious League of Highly Honored Citizens. He said the nation will continue to celebrate and trumpet the scholar's achievement as a shining example worthy of emulation by the upcoming young men and women in this country. The president noted that since the Nigerian National Merit Award was established 43 years ago, the addition of the three recipients will bring the total number of recipients to only 79. Confirming the high standard of the award and undeniable testimony of the strict adherence to quality and the merit-driven evaluation procedure for selecting law rates, he added that the integrity of the award also underscores the high expectation of the nation and the new recipients, like their predecessors, would continue to hold the banners of creativity and intellectual excellence very high. While congratulating the three awardees, the president expressed the government's appreciation for the patience of the 2020 award winners, who had to wait close to two years to receive their award due to the emergence of COVID-19 in 2020. The president recounted the total lockdown of the country in 2020, made it difficult for the assessment process to hold then, but was later held concurrently last year alongside the 2021 applications. Recognizing families, friends, associates and well-wishers who were present at the council chambers in State House to share the joy of the awardees, the president enjoined youth in the country to emulate the good work of the laureates by dedicating themselves to excellence and strive to contribute their quota to the odious task of getting Nigeria on the top bracket of the outstanding nations. The president also congratulated members of the governing board of the NMME under the chairmanship of Professor Shekarao. Yakubaku, as well as members of the four specialized committees of assessors and external assessors for their integrity and transparency and for the excellent work they have done. On the request of the chairman of the governing board over dwindling budgetary allocation to the agency and how it is constraining the agency in carrying out its mandatory functions, Buhari promised that the federal government would provide special intervention as was done in year 2020 to the NNMA within limited resources available. Acknowledging the focal place that NNMA occupy and the caliber of all laureates produced by the agency, the president assured the federal government will do everything possible to maintain and sustain the agency. The Senate has passed a bill that seeks to establish law school campuses in Kaba, Kogi State and five others. The bill was passed during the sitting on 8 February by the National Assembly Senate in Abuja. The passage has now increased the numbers of law school in Nigeria from 6 to 12. The bill, which is titled A Bill for an Act to Amend the Legal Education Consolidation ATC, Act by Establishing the Campuses for the Nigerian Law School and for other related matters, was sponsored by Smart ADME of Kogi West. The passage of the bill followed the adoption of the recommendation of the Senate Committee on Judiciary, Human Rights, and Legal Matters that considered the bill. The existing law school campuses are located in Lagos, Southwest, Abuja, North Central, Yola, Adamawa State, Northeast, Kanu, Northwest, Enugu, Southeast, and Yenagoa, Bayesa State, South, South. The additional campuses approved by the Senate are Kaba Law School Campus, Kogi State, North Central, Meduguri Law School Campus, Boronu State, Northeast, and Argongu Law School Campus, KB State, Northwest. Others are just Law School Campus, Plato State, North Central, Okija Law School Campus, Anambra State, Southeast, Oregon Law School Campus, Delta State, South South, and Ilawe Law School Campus, Ekiti State, Southwest. Delta government approved the recruitment of 1,500 teachers for its secondary school as part of the plan to boost education in the state. The State Commissioner for Information, Charles Aniagu, told journalists in Asaba that it was part of the decision reached at a recent state executive council. It was reported that the governor, Ifan Yokunwa, led administration had three years ago engaged about 1,000 science teachers in its secondary school across the state. 
Aniago said that the recruitment became necessary to fill the gap in all subject areas, occasioned by debt, retirement, and establishment of new schools across the state. He said that the recruitment would be based on merit and devoid of political influence, adding that interviews would be computer-based. According to him, the applicant will be tested on their areas of study. The commissioner also said that the state government approved the construction of the 14-kilometer road and perimeter fencing of the Asaba airport. He said the perimeter fence, part of the agreement reached before the concession of the airport, was in line with the airport authority's effort to check in caution by humans and animals. He said that in line with the government's urban renewal initiatives, new internal road projects and upward review of other road projects were approved for some cities in the state. The ESCO approved the construction of some streets road in Asaba and Okoaxis, Oshimili North, Burutu Bamadi, Ika North East, Kuala in Induqua West, Ika South, among others. The Mayati Ala Katu Breeders Association, Magban, has directed its state chapters to cooperate fully with the security agencies in their effort to address security challenges facing the country. The National Secretary of Magban, Baba Ingazema, made this known in a statement made available to journalists in Abuja. Ingazema also revealed that Magban had resolved to bar its leaders from individually having direct dealings with any criminal group in the name of dialogue. He said that the association had confirmed Hussein Iboso, who until now was the vice president of Magban, as acting president of Mayati Allah. The national secretary explained that the emergence of Boso as the acting president of Magban was necessitated by the resignation of its president, Muhammad Ukirua. He also said that the association confirmed Jaru Gari, who was vice president two, to act as acting vice president one. He said, Kirua has submitted his letter of resignation dated January 20, 2022, citing personal reasons. He had served the association as president for seven years, ten months. Accepting his resignation, Mark Ban thanked him for steering the association through very difficult times and wished him success in his future endeavors. In Gazama, on behalf of Mark Ban, thanked the chairman, board of trustees of the association, the Sultan of Sokoto Abubakar Saad III, for his support and guidance. The Commandant Army War College, Nigeria, Bamidele Alabi, says the college remains committed to producing highly trained, highly motivated operational, strategic level leaders and senior commanders. Assistant Director, Army Public Relations for Girls Brigade, Captain Godfrey Abaka, said this in a statement in Abuja. Abaka said that Alabi gave the assurance when he led a team of senior officers on a course visit to the Commander Girls Brigade, Mohammed Usman, at the Brigade Headquarters in Abuja. He expressed his determination to deliver on the mandate of the Nigeria Armed Forces. The commandant stated that his vision for the college as its fifth commandant was to ensure that the college was institutionalized as the center of excellence through substance of robot academic programs, partnership and collaboration. According to him, the infrastructural development as well as staff training will be central to his administration towards placing the college as one of the best training institutions for strategic and career senior commanders in the country. Alabi added that AWCN will continue to partner with the Girls Brigade to deliver on the various course content that would equip a participant to face the current and ever-challenging security environment, especially the current insecurity confronting the nation and call for more synergy to enable the college to succeed and deliver on its mandate. Responding, the Commander Guard Brigade Usman assured the commander that the brigade will continue to provide every necessary support within its powers. Usman said that both the college and the Guards Brigade were working towards the goal of making the Nigeria Army great. He congratulated the commandant on his appointment as the fifth commandant of AWCN, saying the appointment will positively impact on the college and wish him a successful tour of office. We'll go on a short break. We'll be right back with more news. Stay with us. Every country has its peculiar system of government. In Nigeria, we practice democracy. And this is applicable in some countries across the globe, including the United States of America. What is democracy? It is the government of the people, by the people and for the people. In the political arena, we are ready to explain how we play politics in Nigeria and other countries. The challenge of power shift syndrome how it has impacted or affected the people. How can we make it better for all? Join Fatima Yakub on Melkite TV online every Saturday by 9 p.m. to discuss and examine all about the politics and the power that be. Mr. President, I was once there 
as an opposition senator, there was never a time that we called the president at that time, who was a PDP president, an insult because this is our institution. And if we don't conduct ourselves with dignity and respect, nobody will respect us. The heads of security in Nigeria made several different explanations for killings of our citizens. The Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 as amended, I hereby forward for the, for the confirmation by the Senate the appointment of the underlisted nominees as national commissioners and resident electoral commissioner for the independent national electoral commission, INEC. To watch us, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Melkite TV. Like our Facebook page, MLC TV, and follow us on our Instagram, MLC TV 2021. We are here to inform, educate, and to criticize constructively. Don't miss it. Welcome back. The Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority says that limited quantity of premium motor spirit known as petrol with methanol quantities above Nigerian specification was discovered in the supply chain. NMDPRA said to ensure vehicular and equipment safety, the limited quantity of the impacted product has been isolated and withdrawn from the market, including the loaded trunks in transit. Methanol is a regular addictive in petrol and usually blended in an acceptable quantity. NMDPRA, the Disfront Petroleum Product Pricing Regulatory Authority, made this known in a statement in Abuja. It is noted that the source supplier has been identified and further commercial and appropriate actions shall be taken by the authority and NMPC Limited. It is assured that its technical team in conjunction with NNPC and other industry stakeholders will continue to monitor and ensure that quality petroleum products were supplied and distributed nationwide. NNPC Limited and all oil marketing companies have been directed to sustain sufficient distribution of petrol in all retail outlets nationwide. Meanwhile, NNPC has intensified efforts at increasing the supply of petrol into the market in order to bridge any unforeseen supply gap. The Lagos State Governor has banned the use of amplifiers, microphone, megaphone at motor parks so as to reduce noise pollution in the environment. Speaking at a news briefing in Ikeja, the Permanent Secretary, Office of Environmental Service, Omobola Gaji, said the rate of noise pollution, especially in public places, was worrisome. The news briefing was organized by the Lagos State Minister of Environment and Water Resources through the Lagos State Environmental Protection Agency and the Ministry of Transportation. Gaji said that noise pollution was the most prevalent of the complaints received annually, accounting for 75% of total complaints. He said that the complaints were mostly anthropogenic and not limited to transport, religious, commercial, industrial, entertainment and power generating, among other sources. According to him, noise pollution, which is an unwanted sound in excess of the permissible limit, has become very prevalent in Lagos' environment. The menace is causing stress with severe health implications, while those with long-term exposure will be suffering from hearing loss that is detrimental to human health. Adults are believed to be the ones thought to show great concern from problems associated with noise pollution, but children are quite vulnerable as well, more so as there are known visible symptoms at early age. He said citizens are better informed of their rights to a safe and healthy environment following various advocacy programs of the agency through electronic and print media. The most widely being the social media handle of the agency and its website. The general manager of LASEPA, Dola Pofasawe, said from Wednesday it was illegal for any motor park in Lagos to make use of sound amplifiers and other noise-making devices. Fasawe said that any park found violating the order would face the wrath of the law. She said that Section 177, Subsection 2 of the Lagos State Environmental Management and Protection Law 2017 prohibited the use of public address system or loudspeaker to solicit for passengers or advertise the sale of goods at parks, markets and public places. The general manager said there was a specified limit of decibel of noise required in the daytime and night, adding that anyone who flaunted the new directive would be severely sanctioned. A member of the All Progressive Congress, Daniel Bwala, 
has claimed the vice president Yemi Osibanjo will not be contesting for the presidency in 2023 against former Lagos Governor Asiwaju Bola Tinibu. Bola spoke when he appeared as a guest on Channel TV Politics today on Tuesday. Bola said, Yemi Osibanjo is not running for president, he is not interested. There have been series of speculation that the vice president planned to run for president, but he has not declared his intention in public. Following the defection of Senator Emmanuel Bocha Taraba South from the opposition People's Democratic Party to the All Progressive Congress last week, the PDP has nominated Senator Shaibu Lau Taraba North as the new deputy minority leader in the Senate. This was contained in a letter to the Senate by the PDP national chairman, Iocha Ayu. The letter was read at the State of Plenary by the Senate President Ahmed Lawan. The letter read in part following the defection of Senator Emmanuel Bacha to the ruling APC, the PDP Senate caucus has nominated as his replacement. Senator Shaibu Issa Lau. Senator Lau is from Taraba State, the northeast geopolitical zone of the country, where the position has been zoned. Bwacha was welcomed into APC by President Muhammad Buhari at the State House before Buhari departed for Addis Ababa. Bwacha switching to APC has further skewed the balance of power in APC's favor. There are now 70 APC senators, 38 PDP senators, and one young progressive party YPP senator. Now to our foreign news. The University of California has agreed to pay nearly $250 million to over 200 women who alleged they were sexually assaulted by a campus gynecologist. Multiple women accused the university's Los Angeles site of deliberately hitting James Hilp, alleged sexual abuse of patients. Hips was based at the UCLA Student Health Center during his 35-year career between 1983 and 2018. Hundreds of women, some of whom had cancer, said they were abused by him. The university did not begin investigation complaints against Hips until 2017. It has been accused in hundreds of lawsuits of deliberately hiding the gynecologist's alleged sexual abuse of patients. His medical license was suspended by a judge in 2019 for the duration of the sex abuse case. The university said it hoped the financial settlement would provide ceiling and closure for the women involved. Hips faces 21 criminal counts of sexual abuse against seven women and has pleaded not guilty. But Kara Kagu, a breast cancer survivor who reported Hips while she was undergoing treatment at the university, told the Los Angeles Times that after eight long years, she has received recognition of what happened to her. Tuesday's settlement does not halt an ongoing lawsuit by more than 300 patients. Last July, a federal judge approved a $73 million settlement against Hips, which was brought by more than 5,500 women. According to lawyers in the case, he was once the highest paid doctor in the entire University of California system. Leonard Levin, Hibbs' criminal lawyer, said his client maintained his innocence. The federal lawsuit said that Hibbs was not properly investigated until the university received a complaint in 2017 and that he was allowed to continue seeing patients during the inquiry into his actions. And even after the university told him that his contract would not be renewed. The latest payout follows a series of a large settlements with U.S. universities over patients abused by campus doctors. Last month, the University of Michigan reached a $490 million settlement with more than 1,000 people who said they were abused by a sport doctor during his four-decade career. Meanwhile, three women were seeing another of America's most prestigious colleagues, Harvard, on the ground it also ignored sexual harassment allegations. Ottawa police have said volatile and determined demonstrators remain in Canada's capital after nearly two weeks of a trucker-led anti-vaccine mandate protest. Ottawa is under a state of emergency as police try to contain the protest. Up to a quarter of so-called freedom convoy vehicles have children in them who could be at risk during operations, authorities said on Tuesday. Nearly 80 criminals' investigations have been opened relating to the protest. Out of thousands of demonstrators, some two dozens arrests have been made. While the protest has been mostly peaceful, police expressed concern about extremist rhetoric coming from far-right groups at the rally, as well as reported racial and homophobic abuse. Protesters danced on the tomb of the unknown soldier at the National War Memorial. Officers have issued tickets and warned people away, but have been met by protesters determined to stay. And even a fake bomb threat, which authorities said was intended to deceive and distract police. One officer was reportedly attacked while attempting to seize fuel from a protest trunk. Speaking to press, Deputy Police Chief Steve Bell said, Their message to the demonstrator remains the same. 
don't come if you do there will be consequences bell also disclosed that police had found about 100 trucks with children in them and contacted children's aid society over concern with noise fume and hygiene some 740 miles away from Ottawa, Canada's busiest border crossing was partially reopened on Tuesday after protesting truckers ground traffic to a standstill. Truckers rallying in solidarity with those in Ottawa had blocked the Ambassador Bridge, forcing vehicles to take long detours. The bridge over the Detroit River is a vital trade link between Canada and the U.S. with more than 40,000 people and $323 million worth of goods cross it daily. 60 business groups from the U.S. and Canada have called for an end to the blockade. Hundreds of vehicles were backed up for miles as travelers were warned by Canadian police to reroute. While now open for travel from Canada to the U.S., across the other side, the Michigan Department of Transportation said the bridge remained closed and advised drivers to divert to nearby Port Huron to head into Canada. Business groups in the U.S. and Canada called the blockade an attack on the well-being of their citizens and the businesses that employed them and demanded a full reopening. However, some Ottawans have said the atmosphere has been tense, especially on weekends when thousands of protesters have descended upon the city's downtown core, spilling into nearby streets. Ottawa has been under a state of emergency since Sunday. Let's join John and Malik for sports updates. Hello and welcome to Sports Update. The Edo State Governor, Godwin Obaseki, has approved the composition of the board of the Edo State Sports Commission with Yusuf Ali as the chairman nominee for the board. In a statement, Secretary to the State Government, Osaru Dion Oge, said the nominees for the board chairman and member has been forwarded to the Edo State House of Assembly for confirmation. The names of the members' nominees are Frank Ilaboya, Anahita Emeya Oba. Osayab, Osayaba Osarere, Emmanuel Igbinosa, Aswe Igbudalo, and Uye Akpata. Ex internationals have expressed delight over Nigerian Football Federation's decision to retain Austin Egwavon as the interim coach of the Super Eagles while also bringing in Emmanuel Amenike as his first assistant. The NFF, in a statement, announced the reconstitution of the technical crew, with Egwaiwon remaining as the technical advisor and former Flying Eagles coach Amunike drafted as immediate assistant to Egwaiwon. The announcement, however, to speculation surrounding the future of the Eagles head coach job after NFF President Amadio Pinic announced that the Federation was in talk with Portuguese Joe Spacero to take over the job following the sacking of Gunnar Troll last December. Despite the three-time African champion crashing out of the round of 16 at the just-concluded African Cup of Nations in Cameroon, France and stakeholders alike urged the NFF to retain a Guayban following the team's impressive display in the group stage of the competition. The news came as a welcome development for former Eagles goalkeeper Ike Shiremo. Swedish-based Peter Ije added, Congratulations to Amuniki and a Guayban combo. I am happy for them and with the big test ahead of them, I am sure all hands will be on deck. Atlanta 96 gold medalist Abiodun Obafemi lauded the NFL for trusting in the indigenous coaches. This is what we have been asking for. We need to trust our own and give them the chance to show what they can do. Aminike is a very experienced coach and I am sure that bringing him into work with Egwaiwon will build on a good job that, that he has started. This is the way we go. And that's Sports Update on MLC TV. I am Malik Juna. And now on entertainment, let's join Matthias Ayodeji. On our foreign entertainment news, Adele won three out of the four main prizes at the Brit Awards on Tuesday, where she also put in an assured performance of her track, I Drink Wine. 
The singer won Best Artist Album and Song of the Year for Easy On Me. Ed Sheeran was crowned Songwriter of the Year 2 at the London's O2 Arena and he performed his Eat Bad Habits alongside rocker Brings Me On The Horizon. Dua Lipa won the night's other big prize as TikTok users voted for her and not Adele as the best pop and R&B act. It means that for now at least Robin Williams is still one gong ahead of Adele as the most awarded artist in British history with 13. After winning the first of her three awards for best song, Adele beamed, I can't believe a piano ballad won up against that many bangers. Her so-called divorce album 30 was the biggest seller of 2021, shifting more than 600,000 copies in just six weeks. And the star dedicated her award for it to her son and ex-husband. The winner of the Brit's first ever genderless award for overall artist of the year added, I understand why the name of this award has changed, but I really love being a woman and being a female artist. I am really proud of us. The move attracted some criticisms from figures including Piers Morgan and Culture Secretary Nadine Doris, who says she was concerned about how the new system would work in terms of fair gender representation. In the end, more women were nominated than at any time in the past decades and female artists or female fronted bands won to third of the awards. The family authorized biotic of pop star Michael Jackson is finally in the works. The forthcoming film titled Michael will be produced by Oscar winning Bohemian Rhapsody producer Graham King and written by gladiator screenwriter John Logan. While details remain sketchy, Lionsgate recently confirmed that the studio will handle the worldwide distribution of the film. Lionsgate chairperson Joe Drake shared that Michael will explore an in-depth portrayal of the complicated man who became the king of pop and that it will bring to life his most iconic performances as it gives an informed insight into the entertainer's artistic process and personal life. Co-executors of Michael Jackson's estate, John Banker and John McLean, will also take on producer's role. According to more reports, the film may touch on the multiple allegations of child abuse brought against the pop star throughout his career and even his death in 2009. On Entertainment News from Africa, production is well underway for the second season of TNC Africa's hit series, Little Black Book. And if the newly unveiled cast members are anything to go by, fans are in for a sizzling show. The show producers recently unveiled veteran Nollywood actors Kanayo Okanayo and Bimbo Akitola as the newest cast members alongside Nengi Adoki, Paul Utomi, Michael Ejo, Moet Abebe, Jude Chukuka and Elena Nelson. Season 1 explored the story of Tade, played by Teniola Aladasi, a brilliant business developer trying to get her life back on track after a series of failures, and Liu Ikechuku, a millionaire hotel entrepreneur, defying the odds to keep his business in the green, and a little black book of gorgeous women unfolding truth and hidden desires between them. Followers of the show will recall that the first season ended with a cliffhanger, increasing the anticipation of the new season. While Akitola's role remains under wraps, it has been revealed that Kanayo will play Captain Igwe, Leo's father. Returning cast members include Ikechuku Ononaku, Teniola Aladese, Anne Iche, Floyd Igbo, Jeffrey Kanu, and Bamiton Adigoke. And that is all on entertainment news today. My name is Matthias Ayodeji Peter. for the update and that's all we have for you today join us tomorrow for our daily news via this channel to contribute and to invite us to cover your event kindly call any of the numbers displayed on your screen visit and subscribe to our youtube channel malikai tv like and follow us on our facebook page mlc tv instagram mlc tv 2021 twitter handle is at mlc tv one I am Sharif Adonino Mohammed. Thanks for staying with us. I am Sharif Adonino Mohammed. Thanks for staying with us. <music>